Hey everyone, Brady from TextureLabs.org here. Welcome back to another tutorial. Today we're gonna take a look at how to create light rays in Adobe Photoshop. It's a look you see used in motion graphics and title sequences, but can also be applied to photography and just for creating artwork in general. So in this tutorial, we'll take a look at how to get the basic effect up and running, and then we'll check out how it can work with a few extra steps to create this text effect with a cast shadow and some extra lighting details. All right, let's jump into it. All right, I've got a very simple document open here. As you can see, a gray background and this piece of artwork in black. This eagle is actually a piece of live type. It's an ornament from a font called Eagle, but this doesn't need to be a font. It can be a logo or really any shape. And what I'm gonna do here is create a new layer under this eagle shape. I'll call it backlight. And then I'm gonna use my brush tool with the size set to about 600 and the hardness at about 15%. And I'll just give it a single click right behind the eagle shape. Now this blob of white is gonna be kind of the source of the light rays that'll shine through and around this shape. Then I'll make the background black by hitting D to set my colors to default, then Option, Delete, or Alt, Backspace to fill that with black. And creating these light rays uses some very basic Photoshop tools, but it's a little tedious to do manually because the way that it works is to use the same filters and apply them over and over and over and over again to build up the look. So what I'm gonna do is load a Photoshop action. And an action is just a way of automating any process in Photoshop. I'll include a link to this action below. And I'm gonna start by going up to my Windows panel and making sure my Actions tab is visible. And then here I'll select Load Actions and grab this Light Rays action. And you can download this action using the link in the description. And if you wanna build this action yourself, I'll also include a link to step-by-step -step instructions. I think there definitely can be some value in building it for yourself and understanding just how this works. But I've loaded this up and you can see there are actually three actions here, long light rays, short light rays, and light bloom. And we'll check out how all of these look in just a second here. So you can see that they all say use at 16 bit. And generally a Photoshop document will be at eight bit by default. I'm gonna go up here to image, mode and make sure this document is set to 16 bit. And the way this action works is that it'll create light rays based on whatever is visible in your document when you apply it. So I've already got a black and white image here ready for some light rays. I'm gonna select this long light rays action and hit the play button. And you can see the action goes right to work. On my machine it takes about 10 seconds to complete and look at that, a light rays layer. And that layer is set to screen mode by default. You can of course dial the opacity up and down and really kind of use this layer however you want. All right, let's take a quick look at the other two actions. I'll hide this layer and I do need to select an active layer. This action won't work if you have a hidden layer selected, but let's try this short light rays action. And that's just what it sounds like, shorter light rays. And finally, we'll take a look at light bloom. This is kind of a bonus one, but it can be handy. It creates this kind of soft and natural looking light that wraps around the edges. So all of these actions are creating rays that come from the center of the image, but let's say you want the light to aim down, like there's a light source up here at the top. What you could do is use the crop tool and drag the size of your canvas to be larger in a particular direction. The nice thing here is that this little center point is actually gonna give you a reference of where the center of the rays will be. So if I leave the canvas at that size, then hit one of these light rays actions, now I'll get the rays pointed downwards. And I can command or control click on any of the icons of these layers that are at the original canvas size and use image crop. Now I'm back to my original image size, but I have this new light rays layer with the light coming from above. I'm gonna back up a bit and lose that layer. For this image, I think I'm liking the look of that long light rays layer from the center. And to really give it some character, I'm gonna copy a texture in here. This is Atmosphere 127, one of the many free textures from texturelabs.org. I'm gonna copy and paste this on top of everything, then use Command or Control T to transform and scale that down to be about the size of my canvas. And I'm gonna set this layer's blending mode to soft light. All right, let's bring some color into this. But before that, if you're enjoying this tutorial so far, please do me a quick favor and hit the like button. That lets YouTube know that you appreciate cool free stuff and it helps to get the video in front of other people that like cool free stuff. So thank you for that. All right, to bring some color into the whole thing, I'm gonna go to my adjustment layers menu and create a gradient map adjustment layer. I'll click on the gradient to customize it and maybe introduce some reds into the midtones. Then I'll also add a color and get some darker reds in the shadows and maybe even add some yellows into the lighter colors here and give this sort of a burnt sunset kind of a look. 
All right, and one final detail I think can really elevate this. I'm gonna make a copy of this lens flare. This is also from texturelabs.org, and I'll paste that in here, set it to screen mode, and then transform to kind of match the center of the light source there. All right, well, that's looking pretty cool and should give you a sense of how these light rays work. Let's take this a step further with some typography and a few extra details. I'm gonna jump over to a document that has some live type and I've already created kind of a white blob behind it using a soft paintbrush and I'm ready to use this long light rays action again. So I'll hit play on that action and get some light rays. And then I'm also gonna create a curves adjustment layer and I'll option or alt click between the curves and the light rays layer to create a clipping mask. And with this curves adjustment, I really have a ton of control over the brightness of these light rays. I'm just gonna crank up the mid-tones a little bit by pushing the curves up in the middle. Then here's a technique to give it some extra depth. I'm gonna turn off all those layers and create a new layer. And here I'm gonna use my brush tool with the hardness turned all the way up to 100 and make just a few random dots to shine some light through. Then this time maybe I'll use the short light rays action and that created a few subtle lights that I can use in the background. I'll turn off those original dots and just keep the rays. Then if I turn everything back on, this layer is now behind the text and creates some really nice extra depth. And now that I've used the black background to create the light rays, the background doesn't necessarily need to stay completely black. I'm gonna use my gradient tool and set it to a mirrored gradient, and I'll turn the opacity down to about 20%, and I can introduce some lighter values into the background. Then to give this text a little bit of dimension, I'm gonna use Command or Control J to make two copies of the text layer. I'll drag those underneath the original and I'm gonna rename them. I'll call the middle one shadow and the bottom one depth. And on this middle shadow layer, I'm gonna right click and rasterize this text. Then I'm gonna use Command or Control T to transform and holding shift, I can flip it from top to bottom. Then holding Command Option and Shift or Control Alt and Shift on a PC, I can drag one of the corners outward for a perspective transform, kind of stretch it to look like it's casting a shadow onto the floor here. Then I'm gonna use the filter in blur gallery called tilt shift. And in this filter, anything inside of these lines will stay sharp and the image will get more and more blurry as it moves out toward these outer lines. So this lines up just right to make the ends of these shadows look kind of blurred. I'm gonna set this to about 25 pixels. And next, I'm gonna take this other copy of the text called Depth, and I'm gonna change the color of this text from black to white. Then I'm gonna use Command or Control T to transform, and holding the Option or Alt key, I can scale that down just a little bit to kinda of get a highlight going on the inside edge of the text. And to give it a little bit more character, I'm gonna to go to the Effects menu and apply a Bevel and Emboss effect. I'll reset that to default, then maybe crank up the depth and the size just a bit, to create a little bit of variation with some darks and some lights on these edges. All right, and finally, I'm actually gonna go into this other document and grab the smoke and the lens flare that we already created, and I could just drag these right into the new document. I'll transform and get those into place. Maybe with the lens flare, I'll scale it down a little bit and find a good spot for it. Then let's also add a gradient map to this layer, and I'm gonna use a gradient preset from the Magic Smoke text effect tutorial from a few months ago. I'll include a link to that. I think it's actually a technique that would combine really well with these light rays, but this is kind of a nice greenish blue gradient, and I think it really brings the image to life. All right, well, there we have it, light rays in Adobe Photoshop. I really hope you've enjoyed watching this tutorial and it'll help you to create something. If so, please do hit that like button. And as always, lots of cool techniques on the way, so be sure to subscribe. Thank you to the texturelabs.org Patreon supporters and thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.